type 1 diabetes mellitus and type 2 diabetes mellitus. This is meant to give you a basic understanding of the differences between the two and it is not a comprehensive look at either disease process. For that you need to use your textbook and your course material. Please direct all your questions towards your course instructor. Thanks. So let's get started. <coughs> diabetes 1 used to be called juvenile di um, diabetes. It comes about from an autoimmune destruction of beta cells in the pancreas. Beta cells in the pancreas co-secrete insulin and adrenaline. And the job of insulin is to help facilitate glucose going from the bloodstream into the cell to be used for cellular respiration. Without glucose, the cells use fats and proteins for the fuel source. Amylin is another hormone <coughs> secreted by the beta cells that suppresses glucagon, the storage form of glucose. It delays nutrient uptake and it depresses hunger. And all of this is going to help control your blood sugar. So without the beta cells, we're going to have a lack or a complete absence of both insulin and amyloid. So we understand insulin is the facilitator that gets glucose into the cell. So without it, glucose is going to remain in the bloodstream and it's going to continually accumulate as we eat. And to one point, we will get hyperglycemia as a result. Our body doesn't have a system to get rid of blood glucose. It's either converted to glucagon or it's moved into the cells for fuel. <coughs> Otherwise, it's just going to hang out in, in the bloodstream. So without insulin, cells are just going to continue to burn those fats and proteins. And what is the result is going to be is we're going to have muscle wasting due to protein loss, weakness, fatigue, weight loss, and polyphagia. Our fat stores are going to be depleted, and lipolysis is the breakdown of fat. So ketone, ketone bodies are going to be formed. We're going to, um, this patient is going to develop ketonemia. So ketones are a proton donor, so that makes them an acid. So our serum pH is going to decrease. We are going to develop ketoacidosis or metabolic ketoacidosis. As a result, we're going to have cruciform respirations. So we're going to be off-gassing acetone in the lung. And one of the manifestations of that is going to be fruity breath odor. So we're going to want to look up all of the symptoms of metabolic acidosis. Do they apply in this case? So let's jump over here with our lack of amylin. Without amylin, glucagon secretion conti continues further adding glucose to our blood sugar. Now we're going to jump over to the, diff the, the second type of diabetes, which is type 2 diabetes mellitus. And type 2 is more of a lifestyle. Type 1 is a genetic disorder. You're born with it. Type 2 is a lifestyle disorder. You can be predisposed to get it, but you by no means have to get this one. So we have hyperinsulinemia, lots of insulin in the bloodstream from frequent and um, increased intake in our, our dietary intake. We have obesity and we have a decrease in beta cell responsiveness. So if the beta cells aren't don't respond to the ne negative feedback mechanism, we're going to have a decrease in our insulin. We can have insulin resistance from hyperinsulinemia. So what we're going to end up with is a, a decrease or a down regulation in cellular insulin receptors. So we have a cell. It has a bunch of insulin receptors on it. And we're throwing insulin at it constantly it's going to start down-regulating or turning off its um, insulin.
insulin receptors. And when that happens, we get what's called insulin resistance. So a decrease in insulin is going to be not mean an increase in blood sugar. A decrease in cellular receptors for insulin is going to mean plenty of insulin, but it just can't find its way to bind to those cellular there's no, there's no cellular receptors to bind to. Therefore, again, glucose can't get into the cell. We're going to end up with hyperglycemia. Okay, so that's, in a nutshell, that's it. We have type 1 diabetes from an autoimmune destruction of the beta cells, meaning we don't have insulin resistance. We have no insulin. On this side, we generally have insulin. We just have a resistance to it don't have enough cellular receptors to get the glucose into the to the cell for use in cellular interaction. Thanks for listening.